Everybody, welcome to Snow Talk. Uh, Brian Good here on this Monday new weekend and into holiday week. Here's the very latest on the trends as we are through uh, the days and well, weeks ahead. First off, uh, quiet pattern on our area. Just cold and uh, clear though. Lots of sunshine. All the big snow over a foot. Portions of Syracuse. I know, I know. Our turn will be coming, don't worry. And then we got our next system waiting for us in the Rockies. Uh, we'll begin to spill clouds over us as early as tonight, but more so tomorrow. And certainly by the time we head into uh, the middle of uh, the uh, day here, it looks like on Wednesday, the travel day, that's when the, our rain chance will begin to go up. Well, looking at the snowboard uh, at the moment, uh, nothing significant still showing up on the wintry side. I'm going to give a chance for maybe some wintry weather to get involved with some of the rain as we into the 29th and 30th. But I don't see any issues with that because I still see it's being above freezing for that entire issue if it were to even develop. Let me explain what I mean by this. This is the Euro, uh, and this has been wavering a bit, so this is not set in stone. Uh, this is a typical rain snow line aloft, the blue line here. This is heading to the 29th. It begins to approach the area. It looks like it will begin as uh, uh, rainfall initially. Now, yesterday, and the, even the GFS was doing this too, it was taking a little more in the northern direction, which would be, be a, a severe weather issue for portions of the uh, southern Ozarks into the deep south, perhaps into the Tennessee Valley, would be severe weather. Now, the Euro is coming in much further to the south. Now, it doesn't mean that the uh, 12Z will come in back to the north again. So expect some wavering on this, uh, not set in stone for the last couple days of the month. Uh, but having said that, the potential, if this track were to hold, would be for it to have the, the colder air work its way on the backside, and that would be our chance for maybe some sleet or maybe a bit of snow to get worked its way into the rainfall. But again, I don't see a big deal with that as it looks right now. Uh, but we will monitor it because it's still a long way off, guys. I mean, 10 days away. We can see how much things can change in two days. Okay, so uh, once it moves out of the way, uh, we'll keep an eye on that. Oh, and uh, in case you guys didn't know, I love you all. <laughs> Give me your right XO, but hugs, hugs and kisses for you all. All right. Here we go, the latest on the ensembles. Here is the GFS, Euro, and the Canadian for the weekend, this weekend. Uh, notice the pattern. I want you to look at the overall pattern to the lines here. They're mainly east to west, which is a progressive, nearly zonal flow. Little ripples, like our system moving in for Wednesday, another one for the weekend, moving through bouts of rain they quickly move in move out very little in the way of a huge warm up ahead of it and very little in the way of a cold down behind it so we end up being status quo or normal for temperatures so when you look at the seven day outlook you probably have noticed a lot of 50s we don't have no surge to 80s and no drop down in the 20s nothing crazy it's just an even kill overall and it's kind of a progressive flow now as we get into the 29th and 30th this is where again we run into differences on how this low is going to roll out for the last couple days of the month gfs uh, quite aggressive with the dig here in the plains. There's the euro a bit faster with it. And Sambosley show that it'd be a bit more of an amplitude or amplified system uh, to it as it moves through. So I do think that's why it's potential. Uh, if it doesn't give the uh, severe weather threat more reality to it in the future runs, then there will be a chance for some wintry weather with that. It wouldn't roll it out. And then as we get toward the first, say, uh, week of December, we lose all the data on the other models here. But uh, on the at least the GFS, and it looks very similar when you look at the ensembles. The overall trend here is for the cold to come in at an odd angle, uh, dropping in from the east and almost some cases northeast. And the reason for that is still the blocking type of setup that we got really on both sides of us. One being on the eastern side here of uh, Greenland, just off this map. And then, of course, we've got still a mess here in the Pacific because the, uh, the core of the cold air is still over Russia. And until it gets to shake itself up and move back over toward the poles, uh, we're going to have some problems here with trying to figure out the upper air pattern for the lower 48. Um, it's still kind of a mess here in the, in the Pacific Ocean. So this is going to be really a, our biggest challenge is figuring out how the Pacific is going to behave the next uh, several weeks to determine our weather. But in general, if we get any type of blocking work its way in like the long range GFS is suggesting, then you can see how the cold air would come in in a sneak attack way and drop in and dig itself into the plains in the northeast in that direction. And that would be uh, because of a blocking setup. Um, and that is certainly possible. Wouldn't roll it out. Uh, looking at the indices, uh, the NAO remains on the negative side because there is a blocking pattern. It does not, again, this doesn't always necessarily mean a blocking pattern for us when it comes to cold weather. It just means there's a blocking pattern showing up and that could be all the way through Greenland. Um, so a very east-based type of uh, blocking NAO going on. EPL is at least going negative. That's a good sign into December. Let's try to keep it there. But the PNA, I would like to see this get positive and stay positive. 
for us to get locked in and to a, a set jet stream pattern here. This back and forth is what uh, has been a thorn in our side here because the Pacific jet being so strong. But at least looking at the uh, organic forecasting, the Rossby wave signals into the month of December, still seeing a decent signal. Now, it's done really good. I will say it's it's not as aggressive on the warm-ups and hasn't been as aggressive on the cold snaps in the month of November that have happened because of the drought scenario that we're in. Uh, obviously, you can heat a lot faster in a drought scenario, and in, in cool, dry air, you can cool a lot rapid, rapidly, and in some cases, a lot lower. Uh, but it has a decent idea on the up and down pattern that we're going through. It does show a decent signal moving in and within the first 10 days of December. And then another one showing up very close to the first day of winter. But the trend has been for uh, these waves to translate around the globe a bit slower than what is indicated here by a few days. And if that were to be the case, if we're seeing a signal now showing up in the first day of winter, that would then delay it into Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. Ooh, wouldn't that be nice? Again, our winter forecast does have a chance for some snow for Christmas, so we will see if that were to play out, but it, that's a good sign from the signals anyway. Some eye candy for you. Here's the MJL. I'm not going to get nerdy on what this means. I'm going to Google it. I suggest you to if you really want to know. Uh, but it involves the Indian Ocean patterns, and uh, we are looking at uh, the different phases it goes in, and what you want to look at is more the yellow. And it's taking us, this is the Euro, by the way, uh, generally into phase one and two is the quadrants it takes us into when you look at phase one and two for the typical december through february pattern that would put us into scenario of colder area than the great lakes or perhaps some colder area than general on the lower 48 either way colder than normal showing up at least mgl is also backing us up and the idea that we will see some colder area get more involved but how we get there how it establishes itself is the question and that it also in turn affects when that happens. Those will be the uh, frustrating parts about this forecast. So stay tuned. Expect changes in the long term, but at the moment, nothing to get excited about. We will be watching it.